Uh, but Peyton Sawyer rankings right now dot com joins us. And Peyton, um, I said before, we've got to let you uh, take a bit of a victory lap because the the algorithms are working, my friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, last week, pull up the graphic here. You nailed the top three. You were off only by one on number four. Hmm. Uh, and really, you only you're only in the red three times. Uh, this is a pretty good little run through here. This oh, week. it was it was ex it was super exciting. And as I've kind of mentioned in, in the times past, as the weeks are going to get more into the season, we're going to see more and more accurate algorithms because we're now understanding who's really showing up and who might have had a little bit of pipe too early in the year and is actually not what we thought they were. So. As we get a little bit more in, we're getting closer and closer and the algorithm gets better and better in its predictions. Um, and most most fun of all, when you see the when you see the real time effect of these rankings going up and down as the uh, games go back and forth, um, it's really exciting to see where those potential uh, outcomes might 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 land. Yeah, not I said that I looked at the wrong graphic. You were not in the red at all this week. I was you, just about to say two weeks yeah. ago we were in the two red. Last week, in the red. We, we we were nearly perfect. It yeah, was sorry, wrong graphic I pulled up on the screen. Yeah, nearly perfect. Uh, you really you just had Texas and Georgia flipped, and then like we, there's like two there's three flips. If you flip uh, one and two, and then I think it was thirteen and fourteen, Kansas State and Oklahoma State. Right, which yeah. is we're off by one, and then Miami was a little bit higher than uh, than we expected. If you would flip those two, I think we nail the first twenty two. I want to say dead on, which was really really exciting. Um, yeah, I, I can't really ask for much more than that. No, no, uh, it, it, it's figured things out. So six of the top seven, though, in the SEC, uh, and 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 that's like that's where you were you you were batting a thousand through seven. Yeah. Um, Early on, the models didn't. Your models didn't like Tennessee as much as maybe the other ones did. Uh, has their their strength of schedule obviously blowing out NC State helps that, and that yep. happened a couple weeks ago. Yep. But the way that they're beating people doing that. So there's a there's a really interesting that I'm, thing that I'm noticing. If you look at the teams that are outplaying the expectations, there's three main teams: Miami, Tennessee, and Texas. They're beating our expectations of the models. What do they all have in common? A superstar quarterback that no one wants to look away from. And the quarterback uh, situation over in Texas is really interesting. But just think of you have Cam Ward at Miami, Nico Imaleva at uh, Tennessee, um, and Manning down at Texas. I just think the AP is just getting a little bit starstruck and voting un unnatural to how they do in the past. That's the big thing that I'm noticing. So why Miami is shooting way up in the rankings. And just like they were a couple of years ago when we were first playing around with this, this idea, um, I think it was, it was Hooker who was uh, at, the, yeah. uh, at Tennessee. He was like, it just exploding. And it just becomes so much fun to watch that you're super focusing on the quarterback element and not the whole team itself. So every time I've noticed that someone is outperforming what our model is doing, it happens to be in that quarterback area. So nothing to take away from Tennessee winning 70 to nothing against these teams. And they're, they look fantastic, but now that they're going to play Oklahoma this weekend, it's going to get a little bit more interesting. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And Oklahoma uh, would jump tremendously if they got a win at home, especially as a, as as big of an underdog, wouldn't they? Correct. Uh, for Oklahoma right now, we actually, um, if uh, I can show you if you want, but sure. uh let me go ahead and share my screen for a second. And this look at a bunch of windows. Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, no. Oh dear. Let's see. We're we're gonna have to probably workshop this. Okay, but cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a way. There's always a way. We just haven't done it that way. Wait, yet. hold on. Let's see. Oh, there. This looks like there's another screen. But anyways, I'll talk a little bit. Uh, well, if we uh, can try maybe uh, play around with that, but. If Oklahoma wins this game, there is a 43% chance that they're going to be ranked the nine seed and a 21% chance that they're going to be the eight seed. So 
uh, you're looking at a majority of the polls that we ran. We ran 10,000 simulations with our machine learning model, which mm -hmm. is a lot of fun. You see a ton of different uh, elements. Uh, Oklahoma moves up to the sixth seed in 56 out of the 10,000 times. Now, did all of the other teams catch the plague that were ahead of them? Probably. But in this scenario, you have all of these crazy matchups. 43% of the time, they're going to be uh, the number nine seed. 21% of the time, they're the eight seed. And another 20%-ish uh, being the 10 seed. So you're looking at, you know, 75% chance if they beat Tennessee, they're a top 10 team for sure. So they're really, really in that spot. And I think everyone's kind of on the fence of Oklahoma. They don't really know what to make out of it. They've had like okay games, nothing that Tennessee has done. So a lot of people are really focused in on OU kind of not showing up to this game. Uh, the ESPN FBI has them at winning at like 29%. No one's really giving them a shot. This is, this might be the opportunity to really put themselves back into that top 10 position and have everyone take them seriously. Now, the teams in the SEC have not played each other yet up at the top, and that's <clears> certainly <throat> going to affect things and start streaks and end streaks and all that. But if the rankings in the top 12 held right now, we're looking at the exact scenario that the SEC wants, which is six SEC teams you know, three probably Big Ten teams, one, you know, uh, whoever gets left out of the shuffle of Penn State, Oregon, USC right. uh, getting out, one Big 12 team, one ACC team, and then one group of five team, which at this point would be Northern Illinois uh, right. in the playoff. Right. So that's that's daunting if you're anybody that's not in the SEC. I think it's just they, they have so much power and so much pizzazz. Like, there's and there's no way to get around it. Right. You're uh, if you take Ohio State and Michigan last year, Michigan didn't really have that tough of a schedule that but they were able to just hang in there consistently. Ohio State needs to continue to blow out people to really uh, show up for the Big Ten. And same thing with uh, Penn State. Uh, there's a couple of other um, or uh, uh, show up for the Big Ten. Um, USC might be another one that might be able to hang around in there. If we look at some of the uh, options for USC, let me pull it up right uh, real quick. I have all this information, by the way, on rankings right now. Uh, we also just posted a visualization tool in our latest newsletter. You can see our newsletter right on the homepage. But if USC can win this weekend, there is a, there's only a 23% chance that they move up into the top 10. And that's because no one in that SEC is, uh, is moving out. That's the problem. And that's one of the fun, tough things about these rankings when you're trying to predict them. It's very easy to say, oh, if you win, you're going to move up in the rankings. And that's not true. If there's no room to move up, you're not going to move. So right now, until those SEC schools start to really knock each other out of the ring, there's no real movement that's coming in from that, uh, from that 12 area. Even if you think of someone like Kansas State or Oklahoma State, they're not able to move up because no one else in there is is having any losing games right now so that's that's really the struggle for some of those teams but i don't think that's going to last forever they uh these sec uh texas and georgia are going to play each other soon they're it, you, you can't just leave them both in the top four if if it's a close uh, maybe if it's a super close game and it's the greatest game anyone's ever seen maybe you say hey those really two are the best but that's typically not what happens in college football. You get these big lopsided scores and someone's going to say, you know what? We're going to probably put Mizzou or Tennessee or we're going to finally give Ole Miss a chance to hang in there. Um, but until that really happens, everyone's kind of stuck. Yeah. Well, by the way, Garrett, uh, was that? Was I figured that, it out. You figured it I figured out. It Garrett, out. So we, we had it. So Perfect. continue sharing the screen uh, right. because – uh, I want uh, d to have a chance for people to see uh, how your, your website works in real time right. a little later on. We'll go through this. I want to run a, a simulation. We'll pick a team. I'll have somebody. Awesome. That's what uh, I some, wanted. Somebody, yeah, somebody in the chat room. All right, chat right now. Uh, throw out a couple teams and we'll run some simulations for you before Peyton gets off. Uh, so uh, right now, just put up what team do you want us to run a ranking simulation for and we'll do it. Uh, this is the SE one that you sent me. Uh, they're playing Michigan this week. 57% chance to win uh, on the road. Uh, I, I would say it's more than that, but I'm not a computer. Um, <laughs> does this win help them right now, but will it matter later? Because it doesn't, like Michigan's got quarterback problems. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it helps their resume 
Uh, it's more hurtful for Michigan. So if we go in here and we just type in Michigan, for example, if we look at Michigan, right? Michigan, it's a lot bigger of a game for them, I would say, versus USC. USC on the road in the big house. I mean, how often are we going to say two times in the same year that Michigan is the underdog in the season, right? Like, it's it's very, very strange. So USC on the road in the big house, if they lose a close one, I don't think anyone's kind of pushing them off to the side like they're not the real deal. But for Michigan, this is a huge make or break game. If they can beat USC, which, by the way, according to ESPN FBI, there's only a 43% chance they win. If they can uh, if they can really showcase and show that they are a real team, they're looking at a top 15 uh, finish in, in the next AP poll. If they lose, though, the chances that they stay in the AP top 25, which would be 24 and 25 right here, we're looking at less than 1%. So they're out of the AP poll if they lose this one. It's over. Now, can they work their way back in? As you can see, they're 26, 27, 28. You know, they're hanging around in there, but people kind of forget about them. And I don't think you want to be forgotten, especially when the chances have expanded to 12 teams. You Now is a really good time to try and make a statement piece right here. Stick in that 12 to 15 range and kind of hope that you can get a little bit more momentum, have the quarterbacks figure it out. But if we go back to USC, I don't think it's as nearly as drastic of a drop off as it is uh, for Michigan. As you can see, USC still has a, a good chance of being in the top 20. If we just take the sum of all the top 20 right here, we are looking at 51%. So a 50, 50, 50 shot, they stay in the top 20, even if they lose to, uh, to Michigan. Holy cow. Okay. Wow. Dolly. This is... Um... You will fall down a rabbit hole, people, when you go <laughs> onto the site. So um, we have some names. We'll get to that in a second. You sent me graphics, though, on Oklahoma State, which plays Utah this week. Um, this is this is a, a you know not a make or break game, but this is kind of like might be where you tilt towards who can be in contention in this league. Uh, Oklahoma State has the best shot of winning this game. What did their what did the numbers tell you about about the pokes? Same thing that we were just discussing. There's not a lot of movement up. Mm -hmm. They're 14 right now. Is that mm -hmm. right? Um, the best that they can do, I, I was telling you, there's two out of 10,000 simulations that have them six or seven or eight. I mean, you're you're dealing with a less than a 10% chance that they even break the top 10. There's no movement up. And it's going to be a really great game, I think. But that's really a tough scenario where no one else in the top 10, top top 11 is really projected to lose. So we might get that uh, fun little scenario, but even if one or two fall, there's not a lot of simulations that look at these algorithms and think, man, there's a real good chance that they're going to be a top 10 team. Um, even if they lose, they don't move down that much because even there's such good separation between the middle of the pack and those, those uh, 1920 Notre Dame has a bad loss. Michigan doesn't have a great win. There's still a little bit of wiggle room that even if they lose, you're still looking at a good chance that they're going to be 17, 18. And I think for losing at home and still having a good chance of being a top 18, top 19 team, that's a really great setup. Yeah, it really is. All right, let's run some Sims here. Let's do it. Peyton. Okay, we uh, the team that got the most right after I said it, What's Texas Tech? I actually did see that in the chat a little bit. And yeah. I, a couple, a couple of uh, Red Raiders had a couple of comments for me on social media as well. So here is the <laughs> rankings right now homepage. Okay. So if you want to go check out our newsletter, it goes really in depth. Go ahead and click right there. It's a free login for everybody. All you have to do is go ahead and click in. Uh, the, I'll just go ahead and log out real quick. You go ahead and log in. Um, Oops, let me just go ahead and do this real quick. Perfect. You're logged in. Uh, I, both my parents, or I had a mom go to Fresno State. My dad went to Michigan State, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to find. Here on the homepage, we have the projected top 25 as of right now. So mm -hmm. this tells you with the projections of how the games are going to go, this is what we're looking at right now. You have people like Ment or teams like Memphis moving in, Michigan and Illinois dropping out, things like that. So once you create a login, you can go to what we have as the what if simulation tool. And this tool allows you to look at a specific uh, slate of weeks. So we're looking at the top uh, week five, top 25. You can go ahead and go to the completed games, which really means like 
the 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 scores at this point, right? And now you hear it starts off with the top twenty five. So te uh, Texas Tech is not in the top twenty five. So what we can do is we go to view data, switch to all teams. And now it gives you every single team possible and it tells you where their projected ranking is. That's a little too much information to show. So we'll just go ahead and close this button real quick. But now we have all of the games right here. I'll just do a control fine and do Texas. Uh, we'll wait until we see them pop up. So Texas Tech and Arizona State right now, Texas Tech is projected to win 32 to 28. What do we want to do? Um, let's see. You, you pick. <laughs> uh, are we thinking, let's do let's do a couple of different scenarios. So let's say it's a blowout, right? Okay. Let's say it's 45-10, right? And which yes. I don't think anyone's expecting. But so now if we scroll up a little bit, we'll see that if we have altered games, it just gives you a reminder of the games that have actually been altered. Go And let's actually also look at where Texas Tech is in the rankings. So Texas Tech... Uh, let's see, Texas, let's see, let's find them. Texas Tech right now is sitting at 72. So with the win, that with the projected win, they're looking to sit uh, up 23 slots up to the 72 area. So if we go ahead and say that this is a blowout and we run the simulation, we can now go back down, look at the all teams again, and let's go ahead and see if Texas Tech has moved at all. So they were sitting at 73. Was that right? Yeah. With, where they were just at? Now they're up to 67. So a big blowout win has them moving up from 23 slots up five more slots. So that's the power of these simulation tools. It gives you the ability to actually see um, the change in score really does have an effect on who's going to move up and move down. We even have a couple of situations if we just move uh, down to the top 25 teams, I can reset all the scores and get us back to a blank slate. But for example, let's say Michigan does beat that USC team. Let's go ahead and go back into here. Um, actually, even better yet, uh, Tennessee and Oklahoma might be a little bit more of a, a better flip. So let's go ahead and say, let's say traditional OU big, big points, right? Let's say this is, once again, we'll call this uh, 40 to 38, yeah. which would be a, a really fun game. Run the simulation. So now... You see Tennessee is dropping eight slots down to the 14 and where it, OU is moving up into the top 10. Now, this is treating every single other game as expected. So now you see some movement, right? Now you see Mizzou, Miami, Oregon, Penn State can all move up a little bit because there's been a little bit of cushion. There's a team that's been removed. So everything else playing equal, all the expected things that are going to happen Tennessee losing to OU would drop them uh, predicted to the 14 slot and OU up to the 10 slot. Yeah, uh, I'm putting the I'm putting the link back up in the chat uh, right now so that people can uh, can see it and pinning it to the top. Um, it lets me. It used to. Doesn't right now. Well, what do you know? Um, but yeah, that that's fascinating. That uh, I mean, if 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 that game comes out forty to thirty eight, holy cow! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they both. Yeah. I mean, Tennessee's putting up the points, so let's see if OU can match it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, nobody else. Uh, can you? Let's run one for uh, somebody else in there. Let's run one for Kansas State. Okay, great. Yeah. What are we thinking? Um, let's say Kansas State wins over BYU by twenty one. 21. Okay, so we'll just do some math here. Check me on that. Uh, I had to push out the simple math for the difficult math early in my life. So sometimes yeah. the simple addition will get me. So let's say Kansas State beats BYU 43 to 22. Let's okay, go yeah. ahead and run the simulation. Kansas State stays there. Doesn't matter. Yeah doesn't matter even if you even if you give them the points it's not going to make much of a difference and that's the once again that's due to the blockage that you're getting all the way up here one through 12. i mean usc and utah are flipping by one Ole miss and alabama are flipping by one and i will say this is typically how the week starts you think man this is going to be a boring week but that's because expectations are just typically normal tennessee's ranked higher than ou tennessee's gonna win um 
You have uh, just these games that start off as, okay, well, no one's going to move because there's not that much uh, happening. You know, everything gets a little bit gnarly. First half gets a little bit weird. Then you have a big comeback in the second half. Um, LSU has been someone who's really been playing around with fire lately, right? That yeah. th- that game, LSU was out of the top 25 if they lose. Um, sure enough, that's not what ends up happening. They come back and now they just look like a normal 14 seed, but Last week when you were seeing them uh, really losing big, that didn't seem like the case. So that's where those uh, back and forth and everything is in real time. So we go ahead. If you go back to the homepage, all of these uh, projected rankings will be changing in real time. You just need to refresh the page and uh, check it out. We also have a fun little scenario called the Rankem Challenge where you can go ahead and you can pick Before any of the games start, you can pick what you think the final rankings are going to look like. It's a fun competition. We're getting people interested in it. It's like college pick them, but uh, another twist and another level of difficulty. If you think Tennessee is going to be the number three seed, you can just go over here and uh, find Tennessee, insert that team, and it moves the rankings around just as the way you predict it. Submit submit your rankings, and I'll let you know that your rankings have been submitted, and then I'll let you know in the newsletter who, who had the best submissions. All right, one uh, one more request from the chat room. Let's do it. What happens? He's at Justin R. As a USF fan, what happens if USF beats Miami? USF beats Miami. Let's make sure I'm perfect. Do we have a score that we want to play with? Um, let's see. I would say that because their offense is, let's throw this in like 35-34. 35-34. Yeah. USF wins 35-34. Cool. We'll look at both their rankings. Okay. So look at this, right? That's a that's a huge upset. Let's even go back here real quick. If we look at um, Miami, they have an 84% chance of winning this game. Mm-hmm. Heavy, heavy favorites, right? Now if we go back, If they lose that game, which is actually funny. So I would say maybe in reality, one of two things, either South Florida would be higher than Miami because it would be hard to say that they wouldn't. But assuming that they beat Miami, USF would be projected to be the number 15 seed and Miami would drop down to the 14 seed. Maybe after the polls are done, they would say, hey, they just beat them. So we're going to put them one slot ahead. Maybe they don't give South Florida as much credit as this, but According to the predictions, which are trained off of the AP poll rankings from years past, that's how they would vote in that kind of scenario. Wow. Up 20 spots for the Bulls. Yeah, they're hanging right on the edge right now. Uh, That might put them in and in a really good spot where people take them seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Peyton, this has been great stuff as always. Peyton Soysher, rankingsrightnow.com. We'll do more simulations next week. Uh, Absolutely just hit us up on Twitter. You're on Twitter as well, right? Peyton Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, wherever you get your social media, we're, we're on there. Yeah. So go find rankings right now. Uh, say, Hey, for the segment for 365 next week, yeah. let's, you know, run Oklahoma, run A&M or whatever. So he can, he can, he'll even get some lead time for you there. So <laughs> hit him up, hit me up and I'll like, whatever you want to do, get the information to us. And we'll, uh, I will, I will forward it on to Peyton as well. Love having you on Peyton. This has been great. Uh, have Thank a great so weekend me. and and best of luck trying to keep the streak going. Oh, we're, I can only go down from here. Right. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, try, and, we'll try and hang in there. Yeah. Uh, Peyton Zoysher rankings right now.com. Uh, go to the website, uh, log in that there's, there's tiers. You can do it for free. You can do it. Uh, you can pay and you do all these different things, depending on how addicted you get to it. So exactly. thanks <laughs> for having me on Paul. A blast. Right. Absolutely. Peyton. 